Susan Langford's story can fit into the very DNA of the Inside Edge. She graduated from Brooks Institute, a very prestigious photography school, but her uh, beginnings were not in the visual arts. Matter of fact, it started very haphazardly taking pictures of her daughter. And from there, she developed a very successful still photography practice and um, then went on to take pictures of the darker side of life. And what motivated her, she felt while she was taking uh, portraits, this is her wonderful quote, my life and my photography were full of plastic for, uh, portraiture, images of individuals wanting the right image and not the one with real expression and life. I wanted to expose the truths which can be, can be ugly, real, and harsh. I think that says a lot about who we're about to hear. Would you please give a warm Inside Edge welcome to Susan Madden Lankford. Thank you. A warm, warm group. This has been a lot of fun. I will just come from a university lecture series that has had lots of different events for us, um, all the way from UC Davis to Boulder to DU, um, San Francisco, kiddos who are in criminal justice, individuals who are in women's studies. We've had bountiful questions that have been asked of this subject matter, which is, after this fun, fun morning with Larry hosting and doing such a magnificent review of photography, um, I'm a little chagrined because this is dark stuff. Um, if it appears overwhelming, please go ahead and, and, and admit it afterwards. Tell us about it. We want to have some feedback because we have noticed that with some of the students, it's been a little hard for them to contemplate that this can really be real life real life for women who are in jail. Um, we don't know if we have fed too much material to them too quickly, and I'm not suggesting that they haven't been receptive because we've had magnificent papers that have been written as a result and also and sent back to us. Um, Polly, my daughter, put together this film, so if you don't like it, you blame her. Um, it, actually, actually, we're very, very proud of this work. This is just a 10-minute portion of it. It's actually a 20-minute film, and Adrienne suggested that we do 10 because she said, you're all very talky and that you're going to want to ask questions. So she doesn't want to deprive you of that. Anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll get, first of all, I'll, I'll mention to you there are differences between jail and prison for any of you, and I know you're all very mature, and you probably know what these differences are. You don't know what the differences are? that's always used inappropriately in the press and in the media, but both are used to manage behavior. Individuals, of course, who have broken the law, but law that is drops below the minimum level of what we can accept. And unfortunately, we in the state of California don't quite understand what that is. So we house individuals who are a violation of probation in with baby killers. And jails are the warehouses or the holding tanks for everyone who ends up in prison or for people who are serving a year or less. So individuals who go in and say they have two months, they're going into a toxic environment with people who are very sophisticated criminals. And what we're going to discuss after this film is the positive side of what we can do to try to alleviate some of this recidivism that in our state is costing us $10 billion annually. So that's it. Well, that sobered you up, didn't it? <laughs> Let me just first ask, any immediate thoughts or reactions to what you saw? Yes, please. Go ahead. It's more of a comment on um, something that was said in there about the system itself. Um, <clears throat> I had a teacher last night just share that the little girl who lived behind her in Laguna Beach just turned 18, three boys, and she, her father, was away with a sick mother. And one of the boys is dead this morning mm. because of drugs. And they probably could have saved him had they called 911, but they were so afraid of being busted that they, they don't even realize the consequences of, of um, 
not getting immediate help, and the boy died. Tragic. Yes, go ahead. I want to really commend you, really. Uh, I'm a psychotherapist, a psychoanalyst, and by dealing with the issue of families and parenting, I see it all the time in the room, in my room, in my therapy room, okay, where the issue is. And the comment about um, we spend more time on driver's ed than we do in parenting, there is, we can put parenting classes in our high schools. There, I mean, the information is there. It's not that hard to do. We just, uh, with, with, we just as a society have to make it important. So I, I really want to commend you for really identifying how to intervene and how to work on changing this. No, thank, thank you. you. That, that, means, that means a tremendous amount. I'll speak to that in a little bit. Yes, please. I, I really like the last comment that was up here about they need to be released into a community. And do you know anything about that being formed, or is that just an idea that's out there? Because that seems to be not just for the prisons, but actually for all of society. We get awfully alienated and are not so much a part of the community. I mean, this is one of our communities for those of us who come here. And you really feel it, too. And, yeah. uh, and, and so do you know anything about anyone who's actually doing that, that's actually creating communities for people that are released out of prison? Or, or comment on that. Yep.